Welcome to this video podcast from the International Al Jolson Society. Starting as an audio podcast in 2007, this is a look into the works and legacy of the world's greatest entertainer, Al Jolson. An unrivaled star of stage, screen, and recording, his influences are felt even today, more than 60 years after his passing. This week, enjoy Al Jolson and the former governor of New York, Al Smith, in a segment from the November 1st, 1938 broadcast of the Al Jolson Life Boy program. Mr. Jolson and Mr. Smith trade reminiscence about how it was in old New York, and Al concludes the segment with the singing of Avalon. This is only a small part of the program, which can be heard in its entirety on the Al Jolson website. You know, folks, every kid has some particular hero whom he keeps near and dear to his heart through the years. Well, I, too, have a boyhood hero whom I've never forgotten. And when I heard we were going to broadcast from New York, I called him up and asked him to come over and say hello. He's right in the studio watching the program, and while I don't want to impose on his friendship, I'm so thrilled to have him here that I want to share that feeling with the millions of people throughout the country who love and respect him just as much as I do. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you New York's own Al Smith. Yes, sir, it's good to see you. That's all I can say. Believe me, Governor, it's a great honor. It's a great honor to have you here. It really is. Uh, thank you, folks, for the kind applause. And Al? Yeah? It's good for me to see you. Well, as I said before, honest, it's a great honor to have you here, Governor. Just a second, Al. Did I hear you say, uh, Governor? <laughs> That's right. Uh, aren't you getting a, a little bit the best of it? Well, the best is none too good. You know, Governor, it's been quite a while since I've seen you. The last time, as I recall, we, we played golf together in Albany. Oh, I remember that very well. Now, you were up there in a great show. Wonder Bar, I think was the name of it. Yeah, that's right, Governor. Well, the whole town came to see you. And the SRO sign hung in front of the box office for a whole week. SRO sign? Governor, the way you said that, you sounded just like an actor. Well, Al... While we're kind of reminiscing here, I might as well be on the level with you and admit that I was an actor for several years. You were? Certainly. I started in amateur theatricals back in the early 90s, down in the old church school on Newbury. My first performance in front of a grown-up audience was at the People's Theater. You heard of that? Sure. <laughs> Tell me something. How did you do, really? Well, I got to be on the dead level with you. Yeah. I got the hook. <laughs> you know, there, uh, there were no songs at that time. Yeah. But I stuck to my guns, and yeah. finally, I began to play bits in several shows around my neighborhood. You know, I became a pretty well-known amateur after a while. Now, Governor, don't tell me you got a job in a unit. <laughs> well, no, Al, because... Uh, there were no units in those days. Ah, uh, you said it. There were so many vaudeville theaters to play, even professional actors were working. But those were the days. <laughs> those were the days. And it really gives me a warm feeling all over to hear you talk about them. Not only because we've been friends for so long, but because, well, governors are thrilled to have somebody on this program that was in show business before I played the Winter Garden. Well, <laughs> Al, I remember those shows very well, and they certainly were great. Well, thanks, Governor, but I remember some of the rallies you used to have. I attended most of them, and we used to clown around and sing songs, but there's one thing I want to ask you. Why is it at all your meetings you never would let me sing East Side, West Side? Why was that? Well, that's easy for me to answer. I, I was very reluctant to allow you to scrape your knees on the sidewalks of New York. <laughs> Nice going, Governor, but you know, I've had a few experiences on the sidewalks of New York myself. When I was a kid, I came up from Washington, D.C. and sold papers on Grand Street. There was one night I'll never forget. It was a cold Christmas night, cold as could be. I was standing on the corner 
stamped on my feet and rubbed my hands together when a very important-looking man came up to me and handed me a $10 bill and asked me for a paper. Well, what did you do, Al? I said, look, mister, the paper is only two cents, and if you hold this paper for me, I'll take your $10 and I'll run and get the change on this cold Christmas night. Well, sir, when I got back New Year's, he was gone. <laughs> Well, if, you, if you ask me for the change, I'll kill you. <laughs> well, Al, you may kid about it, but I happen to know that you did sell papers on the streets of New York, and I think it's something to be proud of. And while we're talking about New York, there's something I'd like to say to the people all over the country about a subject that is very close to my heart. What's that, Governor? The New York World's Fair of 1939. I think that Grover Whalen, the board of directors, and the various committees are doing a splendid job. And I'm sure that the World's Fair is going to be a great credit to New York. You know, Al, when I compare our town of today with the New York of my boyhood, it really thrills me. By the way, Governor, there's been a lot of speculation about this. People talk, and nobody seems to know. Just, um, just where were you born, partner? Well, I was born down at 174 South Street in a little house right under the Brooklyn Bridge. You know, the bridge was erected when I was a small boy. My father was at the opening ceremony. And when he came home, he said, Alfred, I've just witnessed a great spectacle, but at the same time, a very bitter disappointment. Why, what did he mean? Well, here's the story as he told it to me. He said, son, this bridge has kept thousands of men working for years. The steel cables, the concrete, the wiring, the machinery cost millions of dollars. Today was the opening. Bands were playing. Flags were waving. They cut the tape, and finally, it happened. What happened? Why, they found out that all you could do was go to Brooklyn. <laughs> well, Governor, I, I can't top that. Oh, yes, you can. Now, you're too modest. There's a certain little song I've heard you sing a dozen times. And I like it better every time you do it. Al, for the radio audience, will you kindly sing Avalon? No sooner said than sung. Lud, let's have it. I found my love in Avalon beside the bay, and I left my love in Avalon as I sailed away. I dream of a heart and Avalon. Dust till a dawn, and so I think I'll travel on to Avalon. This entire radio program is available on the website of the International Al Jolson Society, www.jolson.org. That's J-O-L-S-O-N dot O-R-G. Along with many other radio shows, Jolson recordings, video clips, and information about the world's greatest entertainer. Be sure to visit the site and listen for the next podcast. As Al Jolson said... In the words he made famous, You ain't heard nothing yet.